spec collection notes. Pretty sure it's this one. Yeah. Okay. So with within spin spin coupling, normally whenever hydrogen is picked up in an H. What are you looking at? <laughs> Whenever a hydrogen is picked up on an H NMR signal, normally it just comes up as a singlet because that's what we expect to happen. But depending on if there are neighboring hydrogens present, that signal can split into a doublet, triplet, uh, quartet, quintet, sextet, septet, until forever. So this blue hydrogen, this blue hydrogen would appear as a singlet on the spectrum. But since it is neighbored by three hydrogens plus one because of Pascal's rule, then that means that it's going to turn into a quartet. But the red hydrogen splits the blue hydrogen. So normally the blue signal would appear as a singlet, but the red hydrogen splits it into a quartet. And then conversely, the red hydrogen would be a singlet, but since it has the blue hydrogen as a neighbor, the blue hydrogen splits the red hydrogen to form a doublet. The same idea applies to the concept of the doublet of doublets, because when we have two hydrogens attached to an alkene that are chemically non-equivalent, the hydrogen that we're looking at, the red one in question, that's not on the same side of the two hydrogens on the other side that are chemically inequivalent, all of them are chemically inequivalent and they all give off different signals, but we're specifically focusing on the red hydrogen because that's one that creates a doublet of doublets. And the green and blue hydrogens just create doublets. They, they don't, they're not doubled, doubled, whatever. So the red hydrogen would appear as a singlet because of God. And the green and the blue hydrogen each split that single signal in turn. The trans hydrogen splits it first because the trans hydrogen has a greater coupling constant than the blue hydrogen because of God. And I looked, at, I looked up why, and it has to do with the way that the molecule interacts with the plane of symmetry within like three-dimensional space. We don't have to know about that, but I looked up why because I couldn't not know. So just know that the trans hydrogen has a greater coupling constant value than the cis hydrogen, which causes the trans hydrogen to split the red hydrogen first. So the red hydrogen would appear as a singlet, but since it has those neighbors, the trans one will split it first into a doublet. Like this, these two lines right here is a doublet, that's one doublet. But because that green hydrogen is also neighbored by the blue hydrogen, the blue hydrogen splits that doublet into a doublet of doublets because one of them splits into two, then the other one splits into two. So now we have double doublets. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So the reason why the peaks aren't symmetrical is because when the hydrogens, like, like these two hydrogens right here, they're green and the blue one, when they're so close together, the protons are like fighting. So it's called the, the second order effect, where when the protons are really close together, the interference causes them to lean towards each other, the peaks to lean towards each other. And we don't really have to know why that happens, but that's just what it's called. So if we're looking at this example, then these two hydrogens are chemically inequivalent because the molecule is not symmetrical, period. This molecule isn't symmetrical, which means that the two hydrogens that are present on the benzene ring are going to be chemically non-equivalent, which means that they're each going to give off their own signal. And this hydrogen that's on the end of the methyl group, we don't really care about it because CH3 hydrogens are always going to be the same. They're always going to be chemically equivalent because there's no reason for them not to be. The red and the blue hydrogen will split each other. The red hydrogen would appear as a singlet, but it's going to appear as a doublet. The blue hydrogen would appear as a singlet, but the red hydrogen splits it into a doublet. And the diff the, a doublet of doublet doesn't appear in this because there isn't a third hydrogen in question that causes them to split and then split again. But this, ex this example exemplifies how the proximity of hydrogens affects the appearance of the signals in the spectrum. So this example embodies the difference of how proximity to hydrogens affects the appearance of the signals in the spectrum, but the double of doublets shows us that 
these signals are actually split by hydrogens individually instead of doing it all in one go. That's basically the double F doublets. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, how do you feel about degree of unsaturation? Uh, kind of mid. Okay, so the degree of unsaturation is measuring, is a tool for us to be able to tell how many functional groups are present in a molecule without actually knowing what the molecule looks like. So we're given a molecular formula. We can use spectroscopy to figure out what it's going to look like. But we can also use the degree of unsaturation to give us the same idea. So um, OK, so the, the whole idea that we're basing off HDI is the idea of a saturated acyclic alkene. Saturated means that all of the carbons have three hydrogens, or at least the amount of hydrogens that they're supposed to have. Acyclic means no ring, because the a uh in Latin takes away the ring, just like um, like obduction, when you like do the obductor with your legs, there's you're leading away your legs. That's lovely. And then alkane just means that it's a hydrocarbon. There's only carbons and hydrogens present. And that is the standard. So a saturated acyclic alkane with no rings, no double bonds is the standard that we use to determine the degree of unsaturation of other molecules based on their molecular formula. So the formula for the baseline is this, where we have a certain number of carbons, and then that number times two plus two is the number of hydrogens. And this is just something that should stick in your head because we've seen um, N equals one, N equals two, N equals three, methane, ethane, propane, we've seen those since like seventh grade. But the idea is that once we introduce a ring or a double bond, now these carbons aren't saturated because they don't have the number of hydrogens that they should have if they were just in a plain hydrocarbon chain. So when we calculate these, I am 100% positive that one of these questions will be on the quiz, period, period. So first we convert the formula that we're given into the converted formula, which just means that we take out all of the variables that are uh, non-compounding, like we take out the halides, the nitrogens, the oxygens, and the sulfurs, because they don't have anything to do with the saturated alkanes, and we only care about what we know can contribute to the molecular formula. So the example that we did in class was we started with C6H10. And there's nothing to take out. There's no halides to mess with. There's no oxygens or sulfurs. So the conversion is still C6H10. Then we use the CNH2N plus 2 to determine if this was an actual saturated alkane, how many hydrogens would it have? And then we figured out that since 6 times 2 plus 2 is 14, that the hydrogens that are on the molecule that we were given is not enough. This molecule is not saturated. And then we calculate the degrees of saturation by subtracting the hydrogen values, the big minus small, and then dividing it by two. So this C6H10 has two degrees of unsaturation. That's wrong. Unsaturation. And unsaturation with double bonds, it's just that every pi bond has one degree of unsaturation. So triple bonds have two pi bonds in them, which is why we can discern that this uh, carbon chain has one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens, has six carbons, 10 hydrogens, and it has two pi bonds, which is what causes the degrees of unsaturation. And all of these examples pretty much function the same way. Um, there's a bunch of examples in the textbook, and I'm going to put them on my um, my shared my shared file, basically. And um, I don't think they're very hard to do. I think as long as you get the rhythm going of taking out the halides and the oxygens and the sulfurs and knowing how the nitrogen interacts with everything, that just makes it a lot easier. So, yeah, and that's HDI. 